This is the K1 Max, Creality's current flagship 3D printer that was released a few months back. It's a large fully enclosed core XY with a build volume of 300mm in X, Y, and Z. This unit was sent over for testing and so far I've been quite pleased with the print quality I'm getting. Last month Micro Swiss let me know they were releasing a new direct drop-in replacement hotend for the K1 and K1 Max 3D printers and were interested in sponsoring an install video. Having used Micro Swiss hardware for years on my Creality printers, I was really excited to hear about this new upgrade and agreed. This new hotend design called Flowtech is leak proof thanks to the hybrid nozzle heat break, allows for cold nozzle swaps, and has improved flow rates over the stock hardware. In today's video, we'll go step by step through the process of removing the existing hotend and getting up and running with Flowtech. This is a fairly simple process and requires zero changes to the printer's firmware. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Like we typically do, let's first get everything unboxed and take a look at what's included with this hot end. Inside the box is a printout of the installation guide. There's also a PDF version of this on the product page that I'll have linked in the description below. We have our Flowtech 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is sort of a nozzle heat break hybrid our titanium mounting screws that will secure our hot end to the existing heatsink, a copper thermal adapter that will slide into the heatsink, the Flowtech heater core, which has the ceramic cylindrical heater and thermistor, and lastly, our new silicone sock. Make sure you have all these parts before beginning the installation process. As for tools, the only things we need is a one and a half and a two millimeter Allen wrench. Before beginning disassembly, make sure that the power switch on the back of the machine is switched off and unplug the power cable. For lighting and accessibility, open the front door the whole way and remove the top cover from the printer. Just be careful because both the front door and that top cover are made of glass. For the K1 Max, the first thing we need to do is remove the attached LiDAR sensor, which is held in place to a metal bracket with two screws. To remove these screws, use the 2mm Allen wrench and be careful because they are small and we will need them when we go to reinstall this in a little bit. To disconnect the LiDAR completely, you'll need to pull the cable that has it attached to the tool head. I recommend grabbing as close as you can to the plug and just wiggling it back and forth. Next, we need to remove the front cover of the tool head. To do this, there are two screws, one on the left and one on the right, holding it in place and we'll use that same 2mm Allen key to remove these screws. To give yourself as much room to work, once you've gotten one of the screws out, you can use your hand to move the tool head to the other end of the printer, which will give you plenty of space to get the second screw out. Grab the fan shroud and wiggle it back and forth until it will pivot in place, and then you'll need to grab the cable chain and move it out of the way so that you can lift the fan shroud up and off of the retaining posts. The part cooling fan is attached at the top right of that front tool head board, so grab as close as you can to the connector and wiggle it back and forth until it pops out. If this is the first time you've removed it, there is a bit of adhesive that holds it into the connector, so it will take a little bit of force to remove it. Pull the silicone sock off the stock heater core. I found mine to be fairly stiff and it took a bit of effort going back and forth to finally get it to pop off. Going from the back of the tool head with your 2mm Allen key, there is a set screw in the center of the heatsink that needs to be loosened a couple of turns. You don't need to fully remove the set screw and just a couple of turns is plenty. Then take the 1.5mm Allen wrench and remove the two long screws that are holding the heater core in place. These are going to be replaced with the new titanium screws so you don't need to hold on to them. With those two long screws out, you can pull on the hot end to slide the heat break out of the heatsink. The thermistor and heater wires are connected on the bottom right side of that inner board, so just like we've been doing, grab as close as you can to the plug and wiggle them both back and forth until they pop off. With the old hot end removed, we are ready to get our new heater core installed. We'll start by taking the copper thermal adapter and inserting it into the heatsink. We need to make sure this copper piece is pressed all the way up inside the heatsink. So for the next part, as we're tightening the set screw on the back of the heatsink to secure it in place, we'll use our other hand to apply some upwards pressure to it. Once I got it in snug, I went back and just tightened it a hair more. For the new heater core, when we go to install it, we need to make sure that the cables are facing towards the back of the tool head. To install the new heater core, you first need to take the included titanium screws and preload one onto each side. Instead of holes, the heater core has these sort of slots or hooks, so you can just take each of the titanium screws and pop them onto place. 
Then squeeze them together to keep them from falling off and install them into the threaded holes on the bottom of the heatsink. Using the 1.5mm Allen wrench, go back and forth and tighten down these screws. You want to be careful not to strip these screws, so just hand tighten them. The heater core is still going to be loose even when these two screws are fully tightened, so don't worry about that. The next step is to take the new nozzle and install it into our heater core. For this, I just used my fingers to tighten the nozzle almost all the way. It did get a little bit tight when the top portion of the nozzle was going into that copper adapter, but I was still able to continually turn it. Then I used a small nozzle tightening tool to just hand tighten the nozzle. The cool thing about these nozzles is that you don't have to over tighten them, and you also don't have to re-tighten after you've heated up the hot end. The new heater core has the exact same connectors as the one we just removed, so we'll plug them into the bottom right side of the inner board. The thermistor connector is smaller than the heater connector, so you can't accidentally mix them up, and the only thing you'll want to do is make sure you are pushing them in the correct orientation. The last step for the new heater core is to install the included silicone sock. There is an opening on the back side, which is what you want facing towards the back, that's for the thermistor and heater wires. With that done, we're ready to install the front cover back onto the tool head, install the part cooling fan connector back into the plug on the front top right, then, just like we did when we removed it, use one hand to move the cable chain out of the way and slide the front cover onto the two top posts. Using the same screws that we initially removed, grab your 2mm Allen wrench and reinstall the screw on the right side and the one on the left side that hold that faceplate in place. The last step on the K1 Max is to reinstall the LiDAR sensor, just make sure that you are plugging in that connector in the correct orientation, and then use those same two small screws to secure the LiDAR to the metal bracket on the left side of the tool head. With that, the installation is complete. You can plug the power cable back into your machine and fire it up, and as long as the cables have been plugged in correctly, you'll see the temperature reading and the hot end will heat right up. I spoke with MicroSwiss and they let me know that the thermistor and heating element have been specifically tuned to the K1 and K1 Max, so you do not need to run any sort of PID tuning and you don't need to update anything in firmware. You are just ready to go and begin printing. Before I pulled the stock hot end, I ran a flow test just to have a comparison from before and after. For filament, I used Creality's Hyper PLA at 220 Celsius. Using Orca Slicer's built-in max flow rate test, I set the range from 20 to 36 cubic millimeters per second and ran the print. I then ran the exact same test after swapping to the MicroSwiss FlowTech hotend and compared results. I marked the first sign of under extrusion on each test and then used a ruler to measure how high up that mark was from the base. For the stock hotend, the mark was at 10 millimeters in height, which translated to 23 cubic millimeters per second. On the Flowtech, the mark was at 14 millimeters in height, which was 26 cubic millimeters per second, or approximately 12% added flow. Of course, this is just one filament type and the results will vary across materials, but I was still happy to see the bump in flow. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are up and running with your new hot end, or at least have a much better understanding of what the installation process is like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to MicroSwiss to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.